Hey, my name is Brennan Myers, and welcome to the Create You Experience, where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience, and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right Cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you Welcome to the Create You Experience This is one of my favorite favorite episodes. And I'll tell you why in just one second. But first of all, if you are new here, what we do is before the actual create you experience on the podcast, can't even speak the podcast itself. We create an experience for you here on YouTube. We're across all audio platforms. Yes, but also here on YouTube. And today what we did was a little bit different. I walked out of the library and I was actually giving back to the homeless with my good friend, Kevin Hines. When I ran into a young man, someone that inspired me immediately, someone that was on his way to specific meetings, he's not a big influencer, he doesn't have a million dollars, he's been through one hell of a ride, and he, he's coming out on top, and I thought to myself, I was like, this is exactly what I want the Create You experience to represent. This is what I want it to show off to the world in a way. And so if you are new here, definitely check out that, that beginning part on YouTube. It it was really a cool, cool, cool opportunity. And so, you know what? I'm not even going to say like, yeah, you can give an iTunes review, all of that. Like I usually do the whole link. Hey, go to the link and you get review, uh, give an iTunes review. I would love to hear what you have to say, but dude, say what's up, man. Drew, my man, Drew. Hey folks. How y'all doing? <laughs> so, so, so check this out. Drew, Andrew is, like I said, he's, he's not anything out of the ordinary. It's, I'm not it, rich. I'm not poor. I mean, I just go through my life just doing what I got to do. Right. And so really quick, just to shock some people really yes, quick. Absolutely. Where were you heading to when I ran into you? I was actually on my way to a parole meeting to see my parole officer. I'm currently on parole and probation at the same time, but I do also classes. So after I was going to go see my parole officer, I had to do classes. Uh, for you got to do. I you were able to. That are court ordered by a judge in the good standing of the state of Colorado. And so what were those classes for? For anger management. And drug and alcohol treatment. And you've been through one hell of a ride. I, it, it, it already like starts off by. Yeah, I mean, but what keeps me going after, I know that I've had it rough. And I know that there are people out there that have, you know, had it definitely a lot rougher than me. And that's what keeps me going day in, day out. The possibilities, but, right? Yes. The possibilities of, you know, I know that. You know, there's people out there a lot, you know, they're struggling worse than I am and I'm still able to keep going. Right. And there are some people that aren't able to make it through. So let's, so let's name some of the things that you've been through really quick. Just name them. Just start naming them. I was okay. Just for a brief overview, I was thrown in foster care when I was six years old. I was legally adopted. I was thrown back in the foster care system after because of my legal adoption did you know they relinquished rights they didn't want me anymore um i've been in and out of the system my whole life i've been an orphan i've been homeless i've been hooked on drugs i've tried every drug known to man heroin heroin crocodile i've tried smoking meth i've done meth i've shot up meth i've shot up heroin i've had you know i've I have 11 siblings. Um, I've, you know, I haven't seen since I was six years old um, that are biologically connected to me. And they are more strangers than, to me than my everyday People. friends that I see. Yeah. You know, um, but, you know, that's just the way I grew up and I was raised. And that's the way, I guess, just life. Life didn't give me a silver spoon. 
Right. I had to make it my silver spoon. That's amazing, man. And so, and so you also were telling me about some of the things that you were diagnosed with. Yes, I suffer from mental illness. Um, that doesn't make me any less or any harmful or any less harmful than anybody else. I just struggle with, you know, just like anybody else. That's, you know, it's just a simple diagnosis as somebody's getting diagnosed with cancer. You know, they yeah. have to take medicines to keep themselves alive. They can get cured. A mental illness is not curable. You don't, you don't, believe I don't in that? think it is. You don't believe in that? Yeah. There's medications. There's med, you know, many different things that you can take and, and use to, to help with your symptoms, but you will suffer with it for the rest of your life. And what are those for you? What are, what are some? I of take a numerous cocktail. I've been on so many different psychotropic medications my whole life. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, it, 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 it's, you know, I take some to go, help me go to sleep at night because of a lot of things that I've been through. I have difficulty sleeping. I need something to help me sleep at night to make sure that I'm able to sleep and sleep through the night. Otherwise I wake up, I wake up with severe night sweats. I have nightmares. I mean, sometimes, you know, my, here's my, my, my diagnosis is I actually am a higher high functioning paranoid schizophrenic with, you know, paranoid features sometimes. Right. And with mild mood disorders. And that actually limits my amount of work and, and, and things that I can do. You know, and you got to be careful with certain things. Like, absolutely. And that's what I asked you before we actually got on here. I said, Hey man, can, are you able to do this? Is this cool? If anything does happen, what exactly, how do you want me to react? Cause here's the thing is that like, you're no different to me than anybody else that I know. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I'm like, just like a regular average Joe Schmo. Yeah. You annoy me with your calls and all that stuff. Just like anybody <laughs> else. <laughs> no, like, yeah. Well, that oh boy, may oh be so, but I appreciate you still even put me on the show. So Hell I yeah, greatly bro. appreciate Are you that. Me? So like, like having someone like yourself mm-hmm. on this show so people can see, mm-hmm. I met you literally on the streets, bro. Hey, we, and you, all you asked was to do at least a simple one arm push, push that, up. That's all I asked. And you were down for it, man. And those are the people that are really chugging around in this world and making this world whole. Like you are the epitome of, of what's possible, bro. Mm-hmm. And so, let, bro, let's back up. Let's back up, man. In and out of foster care, in and out of prison, going through an, a felony and this and drugs and I'm sure relationships and living on and off the streets. Relationships are a big problem for me. I mean, especially with my background and especially what happened to me um, as a child, it makes it harder for relationships. It's but hard to trust. It's hard to get to know somebody, even when you can't even know who your real family is. You feel like they're going to just disappear one day? Yeah. I mean, you don't know what real love is. You grew up without, have, you've, you've had to grow up calling people strangers or mom and dad that are complete strangers Yeah. in your life. I mean, imagine that being pulled away for good cause and good just reason. Away people that you know that you have a bond with and at a young age breaking down. Imagine what that does to a, a young individual psyche. Yeah. And being able to deal with that and cope with that in their own way. Although them thinking that, okay, therapy might be able to help you this, that, and the other and put you on meds because you're, well, it did help a little bit, but only I it can only help so much. Yeah. It can only help so much trauma. Yeah. And, and you know what I think of this man? Actually, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that you developed these mental illnesses over time? Uh, I know for a fact, um, and I'm not the only one in my biological family because I have done research on my biological family. Um, to figure out who they are and where eventually I can, you know, find them. I would like to reconnect, you know, and see how they are. Um, unfortunately, I do know that one of them committed suicide. Well, I'm sorry um, to hear that. Um, which was a sister of mine. Um, I have her 
tattooed on my chest. Wow. With also the suicide awareness symbol on my neck. Wow. In the shape of a heart. So have you ever been suicidal? I have, yes. I do suffer, you know, if I don't take medications on a daily for my day-to-day functionality. So I'm able to make sure that I'm doing the things that I need to do so I can function like any other regular person in society, you know? So let me ask you, man. And before we go into like the things that I believe that that could help you and to kind of transform you in certain ways, because this is what I this is what I love about the create your experience in the show is that it's not just a fucking show, man. This is your stepping stone to getting where you want to be and bringing all of those visions that you have, the things that you want. We'll get to that to life, right? Absolutely. First, I want to ask: Have you tried reaching out to anybody in your family? I have, and with. You know, and actually recently I found where my biological biological mother was living and uh, she happened to live in Loveland. I actually found wow. I found her on a registry that they have uh, as public record here in the state of Colorado. Wow. Um, so I was able to find that and I actually took a picture of me and my uh, current uh, my current girlfriend that I'm with okay. um, and wrote a little letter to where I wanted to go and deliver it to her at the house. And my grandfather answered the door. He knew exactly who I was and was very disrespectful, very rude. Um, and was like, what the hell do you want when he answered the door? Really? And at that point I was like, okay, I'm good. I actually went down instead of, you know, giving it to her in her hand show her that i'm doing well i'm living life bro let me ask you something she still lives in loveland yes what if i went with you one of these days and i walked up there and i started the conversation and i allowed her and your grandfather whoever it is to understand the situation and really truly understand where you're coming from show them this podcast and really allowed them to see what you've become and all that you've been through. Would you, would you be open to that? I would be absolutely open to that. I mean, I just want not only for myself to feel like I can get closer with this, closure, yeah. but also I want to see that and show others that this is all possible too. So I can see, so I can also show other people that I can also, you know, that if I can do it, you can do it too. I mean, it just. So let's, so, so this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to schedule it. All okay, right. we're going to schedule it and we're literally going to go drive down there. Is is it against parole? Is it is it against anything? Um no, you have it's a, not it's not against parole. Um Do you have and do, do they have anything like like keeping the distance or anything like that? Uh no. Um it was only like that when I was under the age of 18 due to their certain specific charges. I'm not a lot, I, I'm not sure and I want to put them on blast with the charges that they're actually fully you know are against them um but it was also all over the news um here in the state of colorado oh wow so it was def it was definitely also the case made colorado state history wow it was the longest prosecuting case in colorado state history and do you, you do you want them in your life i just want yeah you know, i don't care if they're in or out of my life i'm still gonna be me do you know if they're good people i know they're not um mm-hmm. especially with if they really did what they did, you know, especially and we could talk, we could talk about it like off, off camera and stuff. I mean, I I'm open to anything, you know, yeah, but there's on, certain stuff that you yeah. can't, you, you, I would rather you not say, yeah. cause you know what I mean? I understand that out of respect. Yeah. But do you, any of your brothers and sisters, do you know if they're good people? Any of them? Have you- I do know that, um, that many of my other brothers and sisters are in and out of state. Um, they were adopted also. Um, and some of them suffer from severe mental illness as well as I do. A lot of people that were adopted, man. A lot of people that are orphaned out and like they, they suffer from a lot, man. Yeah. And I actually recently got in contact with my, one of my closest biological brothers that I, that I haven't seen since I was six years old and he's in prison right now. Yeah. I was actually able to talk to him on the phone. Wow. And he sounds like me. He looks just like me. <laughs> you know, I've pulled up his picture on the DOC locator. 
but before I go any further to even be able to go visit him due to me being also a parolee and federal and felony laws stating that I, I can't go see him due to me being also a parolee. Right. I have to get permission from my parole officer and his supervisor. And I turned in a letter and I still have a copy of that letter with me wow. everywhere I go to remind me sometimes when I'm feeling down, I get that out and I'm like, I'm so close to getting reconnected with, with people that I actually, not only I can call family, but actually are my family. Wow, man. Dude, this is, this is insane. So I definitely, w let's talk a little bit more about what that looks like going down to your, your mom's house and making sure it's safe and everything from, yeah. uh, from on both sides, right? Absolutely. Definitely that. Maybe I'll bring some, some people that I know I'm kind of connected to. I got yeah. some peeps that I can, that can come with um, to make sure that we're both safe. Mm -hmm. And um, man, I want, I really want you to, to get like all this stuff off your chest, you know? Cause like, there's a lot that you want to say. So like, why did you, why, why did you go to prison? Why did you go to jail? I was dumb and you know, I, I make mistakes just as much as the next person. So what was this uh, mistake to you? Like, why did you do it? Whatever. It was. I got stressed out. Um, I mean, I was working a full time job. I had a really, really good job. I was working up in the kitchen with a world renowned Olympic culinary chef. Wow. Um, and also another chef that actually used to work on Air Force One with President Bush. He was his head chef. Wow. So you were in the right direction. I was. And another problem with mental illness is if you don't know yourself and you don't know your limits, sometimes it can overpower you and make you do some really stupid decisions. Yeah. And I am aware of that. And I learned something new about myself each and every day. Yeah. And pretty much what happened with that is I, I got, you know, I let my mental illness, you know, get the better of me. And I stole one of my boss's cars and I got charged with that and ended up going to prison for it because I failed to comply with probation. I had plenty of opportunity to do that. Um, I wouldn't get off the weed. I wouldn't get off all the other drugs. But while I was in, in prison, I, I saw and learned things that you should never learn or ever see in your life. And yeah, it, you know, there's so much things that they can do to keep you safe, but the prison system and the judicial system is crooked. It's fucked. It, and no matter how much reform they talk about, no matter how much they say they're trying to help, they cause more damage and they cause any help. Damn. That's some, sh that's some real shit to like take into account, man. Cause you've been, you've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen people on their worst. I've seen people more strung out on drugs in prison than really? I've seen on the street. I've seen more murders in prison than I've seen murders on street, on the streets. Damn. And that's something to keep keep into account because, I, I mean, look where I live, right? Yeah. I have a beautiful place. and It's I take, absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Thank you, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're joining well, me. Thank you for even having me here. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes we take for granted. Not sometimes. We fucking take things for granted all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Have you ever slept next to a, next to, like, in an alleyway? I have slept on the streets. I've slept with only but the clothes on my back. I have actually worn the same clothes for close to almost six months at a time. 
I would actually have to catch the bus. I remember for the, you know, where I'd, I was able to go see a friend of mine make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and that was the only thing I was able to eat yeah. that day. And I would have to go catch the bus, and I was actually wanted at this time. I had a warrant out for my arrest, and believe it or not, I was actually living in Colorado Springs at the time. Shout out to Colorado Springs. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a warrant out for about a year. And I was camping out in their backyard. Really? Right behind the county jail. And they didn't <laughs> even know it. <laughs> you sneaky bastard. <laughs> so what did you do? What, so, so did you turn yourself in or did you? I actually out? went, you know, I heard that my, you know, I had one of my foster moms tell me, hey, well, you know, they're looking for you. I'm like, well, I'm right. I'm right here. I mean. <laughs> I'd pack up everything, my tent, my, you know, my flashlights, everything I had on my back, my blankets, and the clothes I wore each and every day. And I would get up at 5 o'clock in the morning because I know I knew that they would come do their rounds on horseback. The sheriffs would come around to on their horse. <laughs> and I would walk by, walk right past them. It was the sheriff's. That I actually, that I knew, you know, they knew me by name. They knew my name. They knew my social. They knew everything. And they just never, they, because I was not doing anything illegal at the time, they had no probable cause or any reason to stop me. Although I was having a warrant out, they couldn't do anything. What the fuck is wrong with, dude? I'm, I'm telling you, man, this, these systems are so freaking nutty man it He's is uh, oh. so okay so all right so you've been through like you stole a car was it a nice car yeah was it, it a was. bentley bmw okay what what series x3 okay at least it, it's a nice car at yes least. but i'm dude i'm thankful that you did like i'm, I'm making a little joke out of it the, because the thing is because bro like it's something to look back on and be like it's my past i was an idiot at that time yeah. i was just wasn't doing anything smart like yeah, but, you know, I actually had a job at the time. I had, was holding my responsibilities, but I was not taking care of myself. Right. Of my mental illness. So what are you was, doing now, man? What are you doing now? Tell me. I'm actually, I don't work. Um, I'm currently on Social Security. I get $771 a month to survive on. Okay. When the cost of living is extremely much more expensive than that. Yeah, of here. course. Of course. But at the same time... I make do with what I have. I mean, I got blessed to know some very special people right now that are my landlords. Very, very special people um, that gave me a place that I, you know, I could rest my head. Right. And they're good people. I would, I'd go to the grave knowing that, you yeah. know, especially someone with my background and knowing, you know, me just recently getting out of prison would not rent to me. I, I'm in a house. You know, I'm, I'm renting a, a piece of, you know, out of a house. You're so a grateful, basement. man. I, I can hear it in your voice. You're just so grateful. It, it, it's amazing because most people right out of prison don't have a house, don't have a place to go. Half the people uh, on the streets were just came need, out of prison. Yeah. And they don't have this, you know, they. Are there a lot of good people on the streets? Well, there's, I wouldn't say a whole lot, but there is a good portion of people out there that mean well and if they got the proper help if they got the proper means and i mean it's not just saying oh we're out here to help you or do fill out this paperwork this that and the other which i understand everything takes time it's a process right but think about it they've been doing this process they've been living homeless for how long yeah years and years they've been dealing with drug abuse for how many years if we got them help today and we show that somebody in their life actually legitly gives a, f pardon my language, actually legitly gives a fuck. So, you know, is that it, something that you want to do in your life? Help the homeless? I, I mean, yeah, I would, I, I want to get out there. I want to show people that, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm out here, you know, doing my thing, you know, trying to get my life squared away. I eventually want to make a difference in other people's, you know? Right. So 
this is this is good, man. We're tapping into some real stuff now. Yeah. So right now you're going through AA. You're going through drug. Is it drug rehab? Is it rehab or actually it's a it's court ordered drug and alcohol treatment through a mental health agency that I good. that I okay. go through, and that's actually at Mental Health Center of Denver. Shout out to them. Shout out, but, you know, boy, yo. It's they're actually now. good. It's a good agency. <laughs> Tell them that you're on the podcast. You're going to tell them? Yeah, I'm going to tell them. Hell yeah. Let them know. You know, but there are good people out there. They're really, you know, they're legitly out there to help you. I mean, they, you know, they, they ask you how your day is in. I mean, they even have a greeter by all the entrances. It's like church. Did yeah. they give you a mint too? Like, Here, here's <laughs> Not a mint. Welcome, quite. Welcome to the church. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but I mean, it, 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 it's actually... It makes it makes it feel more, you know, you're, you're more, you know, how do say, more welcoming, more, welcoming. more, more safe, more a safe, a safer place where you can actually open up and actually talk about your issues. So, bro, I want to I want to keep on digging deep into this because I feel like a lot of people don't truly understand what goes on in this world. No, they, 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 they don't. don't. What are some give me a couple stories that are like, fuck, man. Like, damn. And I know it might be uncomfortable for you. Okay. Um, but I would love to, so that people can really be like, what? Okay. Well, here's a little something about me. Um, the, re- uh, the reason why I was staying away from my biological family. Can you uh, say this? Is- I can say this. I, this is my history. Okay, um, cool. I, I, I don't have a problem. I just want to make sure you're it. good. You know what I'm saying? Um, my mother and father... Um, were actually indicted on child sex abuse on their own kids. It took over 10 years to prosecute them because they had the state had to legally wait for you know some of the witnesses, which happened to be some of my siblings, and so on and so forth, to be of the legal age of 16 to testify in court about what happened and what was forced we were forced to do. You was included. Yes. Did you testify? Yes, I did. So you, so you know them. I know what they look like, and they know what you look like. Yes, I look like a spitting image of my father, but I have no relation to him. He, there's a difference between a dad and a father. He is my father. Mm. A dad will open his arms, love you, protect you support you a father i feel is just there to make fit the role to try to, to say get you oh into the world. you know just to be like oh well i did this i did that when he really didn't do it jack squat do you believe that they can transform and be becoming better I, people i think so i think anybody anything and everything is possible with the proper guidance motivation and guidance and yeah. help but ain't nobody gonna help ain't, is there's nobody's gonna help you unless you help yourself and admit that you have even done something wrong either you know and that's one of their problems they don't want to admit they did something wrong yes wow and they didn't go to jail yes they did they did my mother served about five years for it my dad's got a about a hundred years what yeah it was all happened out of Larimer County. He's got a hundred fucking years. Yes. Wow, man. And, and your your mother? Do you feel like she was strung along with it? She wants. She actually during the trial, she actually tried to plead insanity to try to get off and try to spend the rest of her time easily in a mental institution. I told I I revised against it, mm. and the reason why is I wanted justice, not for just myself, but for other people to realize that just because no matter what you do wrong, I understand there's still you know situations with you know mental illness, but it still doesn't make you and make give you an excuse. You're fine. You're fine. Burp it up, it brother. <laughs> brother. Burp it up, brother. Doesn't give you an excuse to do it. To, to hide away from your your choices, your poor decisions. 
Because you always have your a choice life even with alter, mental illness. Your life okay. altering decisions that altered the life of not one, but multiple lives, and yet alone your own children's lives. So why did she only get five years and your father got a hundred? I guess they felt sorry for her, I guess. The fact that she was Was she strung along? Was it was it like she was like She feels like she was strung along or, you know, like forced into it. Like, yeah, that's what some of the reports said is saying that. And what are your thoughts? I mean, if she was forced along and if she was a mom versus a mother, like I said, there's a difference between those. Um, why didn't she stick up for us? Do you know she, she stick did? up for do, her? Do you, do you have any remembrance of, of any of those times? I, not much, right? Because you were six years old. I mean, yeah, it's hard to tell the difference when, you know, whatever. But I remember our last visit when I still replay a lot of the memories in my mind like it was yesterday. Wow. I mean, seeing all my siblings cry, you know, breaking down. But Fuck, the last man. visit, she was trying to kiss us all on the lips. And me being young i'm like uh gross whatever but at the same time and one of the workers come in and they ask them not to do that not to kiss them because it's not appropriate and my my mother's exact comment was what do you mean i can't kiss my own kids on the lips so here's the interesting thing about that man is that I have a lot of friends, like, in different cultures that they do that. Yeah. Like, they kiss them on the lips. But obviously, in your case, it, it, it may have been different or however that was. And, like... Especially through, revolving the certain case that it was revolving around. Right. I think it, it was a little more of a touchy situation for them. Right. So, so why do you want to get connected with her? I just never got the closure on asking why. Why? Why did you do it? Why didn't you get help after all the times that they tried to intervene? DHS tried pulling us out. They would let us right back in. You'd be right there. You didn't help. Did it happen? Why, Did it why? keep on happening? Do you know, yeah. like through the years? No, they were taken. We were taken away at the age of when I was six. And all so, of them I mean, were, and all of and, them, uh, your siblings as well. Yeah, they, they lost all parental rights. Wow. Okay. Um. And and eventually come to find out also that the courts ordered my mother to get their get her tubes tied because of the fact that the K they didn't want them to hurt any more kids. Holy jeez, bro! So you, dude, I I I want to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you. Number one for coming on the show. Number two for you even wanting to rehash that relationship. And I always say to everyone that I believe there's there's more to every story. I believe there's always more to each person that we see. Uh, we don't know what every person went through. You don't know her side of the story. You don't know every single bit of it. And I know it's horrific and I like everything that's happened and what your dad did and, and all this stuff. And the beauty in this is that none of this defines you. No. And all of your past doesn't define you. And so when someone, when you write your bio, for like the create you experience, right? Because I'm gonna ask you to write a bio. You're not gonna be like, hey man, so my name is Drew and I did drugs, I did this and I did this, I did this and right now I'm on social security. No, you're gonna be like, I am a, um, I, my passions are this, this and this and this is what I'm pursuing and this is what I want for the world. You yes. know what I mean? That's your fucking bio of life, bro. Yeah. And it's always, it's, it's hard sometimes to remember that but look at you. You're grateful. You're grateful to go home and be able to sleep. You're grateful to be here. I'm going to get you an Uber and go, to go back so you don't have to fucking walk in the cold. You know, like, I'm going to get you a meal. Which I appreciate, and I, I greatly do. Fuck yeah, dude, because here's the thing, man. I don't just fucking talk about it. I'm real. And this is what lacks in the world. Mm -hmm. No bullshit. I don't know you. I don't know if you could have a gun. I don't know if you're if if like any of this is a lie or whatever it is. What I do know is that I believe in me enough to sit here with you and trust that. 
and the same way goes both ways. You know, I don't know you. You know, you're willing to let me get my story out there, whether you know, you don't know if it's true or not. But you know what? You can hear the sincerity. You can see it in somebody's eye. You can read a body person's body language. And you can tell when somebody's real versus fake. It's you can tell. It's it just dead. says it. I mean, <laughs> people say it's my fucking boy, man. Here's my fucking boy. Like, yo, yo, you and I are gonna be friends for a lifetime, man. I want to see like you succeed, that. bro. I want to see you succeed. I want you. I want to see you have this conversation with your mom, and you tell me about it. You know, I I want to see you speak in front of people to get your word out. I want you to go outside and help a homeless person. I want to see you rehash it with some of your brothers and sisters. I bet some of them might have a family. Yeah. Someone. I know some of them do, but um, some of them actually were adopted by some of my old foster families that were obviously, you know, I'm going to, if I may say one other thing. Dude. Foster families. Fucking, this is you, man. Go. Foster families are not all what they crack up to be sometimes. And I'll tell you like this TV, man. like, hey, you just got fostered into like a beautiful, loving and you know, just be, just because something it's presented one way, those doors do close sometimes. And bad things do happen in foster homes. Foster homes, there are I've been through so many abusive foster homes. It's really um it, it's it's shocking. And like in what way? What do you mean? Are you able to say anything? I I can. And I hope that, you know, some of them that are actually, that are still foster parents, and I hope that, you know, you know, I'm remarked by some of these foster families that are actually out there that are doing good and actually willing to help the kids. More power to you. But those people that are using the state and using those kids for just a paycheck, Mm. You know, and and thinking that just because they're not your kids doesn't mean that they're not human beings either. And it's shocking that some of those people have licenses by the state to watch children. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I mean, I, me and my brother, the one that I just recently reconnected with that I found out that was in prison. Yeah. We, he brought up a good point. He's like, remember one of those foster families where we uh, we were in a foster family together and they were trying to adopt us both and eventually they didn't. They adopted one of my little sisters instead. They would actually put us in straight jackets and lock us down in a basement uh, just for, just because they thought we were, you know, because we were rebellious and we didn't like the fact that they were treating us a certain way versus their own kids. They made us shave our heads. We weren't allowed to have any specific haircut. They would shave our heads off, shave our heads bald. Like, and I, I don't, you know, like, like we're a prisoner in some kind of, you know, camp somewhere. Fuck, bro. Fuck. Mm. Oh man, you, you, people ask me all the time, why do I do what I do? <laughs> it's not for a weight loss. That's like the most, that's the smallest part of it, man. It's to, to fucking help the world and transform the world, the mindsets, because it all starts with ground zero. It all starts with that beginning, that foundation. It's where you came from, how you were developed. If we can cure this bullshit and these systems and stuff, that are actually not real systems and aiding in success, we can cure a lot of the pains and the problems, even disease, even cancers in this world today. All it takes is one person with the will and the strength. Yes, bro. And like, that's you, man. You see that? But I can only go so far. But at the same time, you're sitting on the crate you experience and you have somebody with a reach. So now it's next step. Send me your ideas. What do you want to do? Start creating, start getting out there. Let's get you a job. Let's get you within the right groups. Let's get you in a nonprofit. And here's the thing, bro. Now you can approach people and be like, hey, I have a reference. Brendan Myers. 
who is this Brennan Myers guy? Oh, he has the Create You experience. Oh, wow, you had a podcast with him. Oh, wow, you've been through a lot of shit. And if I trust you, why the hell can't anybody else trust you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have every reason. I have freaking cameras everywhere to do whatever the fuck you want to do. I got a nice car. You could take my nice car. You know, but you're not because, because who you truly are, bro. Let me tell you who you truly are. You're not, you're not a schizophrenic to me. You're not a, 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 a disease-filled subject to me. <laughs> you're not a... I'm not a zombie. You're not a fucking zombie. <laughs> you're not an asshole. You're not someone that's out to get me. To me, you're just like me. I just was planted some incredible seeds in my life. And I made specific decisions. But my mistakes aren't any less or any more than yours. Mm. They're just different. But you know what? They may be different. But you know what? They're still decisions that we've all had to learn something from. There it is. And if we're able to learn from those, yeah, we might have to take, you know, they may be similar. They may be whatever. But you know what? There are our own experiences. Amen, bro. And, you know, if we're able to learn from those and, and teach somebody else from going down those, you know, similar paths. Yeah. I mean, hey, I mean, that, that's it's making a difference not only in your life, but another person's. And you don't know just simply even walking down the street, even smiling towards somebody that what could, it means. Yeah. Dude, when I go down, when I go down the street and I see someone that's homeless or something I'm like, yo, what's up, man? It'll be 1230 at night. There's a random, a random black guy like with his like. like Literally a couple days ago, you know, you, you, when you think of it, you're like, okay, at night, like, I'm, I'm just talking society here. This is what fucking society says. And Mike, it's cool, bro. <laughs> is this cool if I talk about this, bro? It's like, but this is, this is the perspective on this world. You see a black guy at night. It's 1230 at night. He's got a hood over his head. And he's just standing there. Who, it, like, let's be honest. Society says, like, oh, that's not a good guy. He, like, something's going to happen. Stay away from Stay him. Stay away from him, whatever. I'm walking with, with this kid, 18 years old. I just went for a random run at, like, 12 o'clock at night. No shit. I was mm -hmm. standing there. He just graduated high school, whatever. He's telling me about his life and what he's doing and, and all these different things. So I start walking with him, and the, the guy's there. And he's walking around in circles, right, and, like, talking to himself a little bit. I'm walking. I see him peering to the right. I start peering more toward the left. And he's looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. And all I say when we walk by is like, what's up, bro? How's your night going? And all he says is, good, man. I appreciate that. You're simply a simple hi, smile. And a, a simple acknowledgement is all people want in this world. Mm -hmm. They want to know that their life matters. Mm -hmm. All these people, oh, so many social media influencers, so many CEOs, so many business leaders, so many leaders and leaders. I want to put this in quotes because it's bullshit. What, when someone says that they're an actual leader, mm -hmm. say, say all of this, Oh, I'm going to give back. I'm going to do this and that. But the majority of it's bullshit, man. Yeah. You know the, why? Why? Society is run by, you know, themselves, you know, everybody's so self-absorbed with themselves. They want to make sure that they're okay. They want to make sure that, you know, they, they want to make sure that their bills are taken care of, you know? But what people don't realize but What is they don't realize is a simple high and how everybody else is doing has a big key on if, you know, or, you know, just, you, you know, you have a lot that you want to say. I, I, I know you have like a million thoughts in your mind. So, so hold on. Let me, let me finish this yeah. for you. What they don't know and what they don't realize is that their success mm -hmm. and, their, and their growth and their happiness within themselves isn't about the money or the paycheck coming in. It's about how they give mm -hmm. and how they're connected. Yep. And that's where the growth is. And when you start to finally create those relationships in your life, the way society works can transform very easily. But we're so self-absorbed and yep. we're so ego-filled because of what we've been through. And we try and we try and create these things around us because we haven't been acknowledged. Yeah. Because we haven't achieved things that other people said that we should be achieving. Because 
maybe we didn't get that good grade on the test and our mom or dad is like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, why didn't you study? You know, it's like all those things add up right. and soon enough, those become a lot of our leaders in this world. Leaders, people that have actually been through a lot of pain and haven't embraced it, haven't dealt with it. Like, bro, you're a leader, right? I like to think so sometimes, but yes. Sometimes, fuck sometimes, <laughs> man. You're a leader at all times. Yes, it's all about what you tell yourself. Exactly. And if you say that you're ever going to go back to prison, you're going to go back to prison. It's all a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you'd be expecting that, that something like that's going to happen. If you think in a positive way, one thing I've realized, and I've had a lot of time to sit down and think things through. <laughs> yeah, you've been me. in freaking prison, bro. <laughs> and there's, what nothing, else you gonna do? there's nothing to do but other than either watch TV, if you were lucky enough to buy yourself a TV, or you just sitting there reading and reading, workout, reading. And Bro, we should get a training session in sometime. What's up? We should get a training session in sometime. Let's work out sometime. Uh, all right, I'll be down with that. I know you're big on body weight training. They don't oh, fuck around I, with calisthenics in, in, oh, in no, the pen. Oh, no, I can tell you, a, I can teach you a thing or two about something. I don't know, my brother. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a body weight guru. That's what I'm known for. I'm, oh, really? I'm known for body weight stuff, movements. Okay. Uh, oh. It would be cool, bro, because like I come from an exercise physiology background mm -hmm. for my body weight training. Really? You come from a from a penitentiary <laughs> <laughs> background. But not, 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 not only that, I mean... I mean, I also, I was lucky enough that, you know, I had one of the, you know, I got through a really good foster family. Oh, really? You know, before I went to prison and it made it kind of easier. They actually put me through a lot of uh, martial arts. And that's I right. Was tell really, us, tell us, tell was, us, man. Tell us. I, I pointed actually, at you. Next time I point at you, just go like this. So, uh, how about this? No, no pointing. So, any, any, any time Whatever. anybody ever points at you, just grab, grab their finger. Be like, no pointing. No pointing. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, brother. All right. No so, I've actually, um, I, I, I've studied several different, you know, um, forms of martial arts. Um, I actually did a couple competitions. Um, however, um, but I've, I've had sponsors, you know, sponsors, you know, that, you know, through their dojos and whatnot. Um, and it was a great, great outlet for me, you know. I mean, that was one thing that I've always wanted to do, you know, even growing up watching, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to admit it when I was like, you know, I used to watch some TV and I'd sometimes when I was allowed to, I would be watching power Rangers yeah. or watching teenage. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? I'm blue. I'm, I'm, I'm a blue man. I was man. the white guy. Yeah. You know, I was, I was, I you were the white, the white guy. <laughs> I was the fucking white guy. <laughs> but, uh, I, um, I would also watch the teenage mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh man, I fuck with Ninja Turtles, man. Yeah, right, dude. Uh, I'm big in Ninja Turtles, bro. You, you, you seem like you have an aura around about you, man. You're so mm -hmm. happy. I do. I, I, I try to be, no matter how bad a situation may be. And I know that I've been through a lot worse. Yeah. But you know, also, I've managed. I'm right here. I'm standing. I'm breathing. I'm eating. And knowing that somebody's out there that's going through it a lot worse than me at this moment keeps me in a positive mindset. Keeps if my mindset's positive and happy, I'm gonna be happy because no, you. no matter how bad somebody else tries to make my day, I have ultimate control on how my day is gonna turn out. So let me ask you, man, where do you want to be in a year? If it's a perfect world. Tell me. Our, well, if the world was perfect, no, I would perfect paid. for you. If it was a perfect life for you, where do you want to be in one in one year from today? With with your past, understanding your past. I'd want to own my own house in uh, one year. Yeah. I hell, I'm I'm almost thirty years old. I mean, I've struggled with jobs, with the fact of my history and the fact that you know my mental illness also makes it difficult for me to maintain a job too. I mean, I've tried saving up money. I mean, hold on. It's all right, all right. So, so first uh, of all, let's let's remove some things away. All right. Let's re remove some words out of your vocabulary. Trying, fuck yep. trying. You're doing at all times. Yep. Okay. So you can agree on that. Yes. Any of the have tos that you have to do this, fuck that. Throw it out the window. You don't get to use that ever, ever again. 
Got it. Got it? Got it. Promise? Shake on it. Those are just a couple, bro. Those are just All a couple. Right. I want you to start looking at your life like it's already happened. You've already made it. Like you've mm -hmm. already made that money. And you already have that house. That this prison stuff is a story that you get to tell other people to inspire them. You get to walk around with your chest held high because you actually have a story that can relate to people that can save a lot of lives. Yep. A lot of people don't have anything to share. Very minor, like this. And I mean in this manner. Everyone has something to share. Everyone goes through something. Anxiety, depression, whatever it is, everyone yep. goes through stuff. But acknowledge yourself, first of all, where you've come. Take out all those fucking words. And now let's get you to that next spot. So what do you need? What do you want for your life right now? Where do you want to work? What's something that you've had your eye on for the longest time? Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to, you know, help other people. I've always wanted to, you know, I have an extensive background and I've always, for some weird reason, I've noticed if somebody was in a dire situation, especially if, like, if someone was like, you know, needing help or something, I would definitely be, I would try to be the first one to try to help them, you know? Um, so let's do this, man. Let's do this. So I have a friend. Her name is actually, she was on the podcast, Jacqueline. So she wants to do stuff with the homeless mm -hmm. and you never know. There could be like a really cool job opportunity here for you. Mm -hmm. I, I'll reach out to her actually after this, we'll FaceTime her. And then also I think we can get you connected with some people to be able to share your story a little bit and, and, and have like a paying job around here. And what I want you to do tonight is to get me a list of places that you want to work at. Places that you, what, go ahead. Is, is it tough to do? Oh, I mean, I've never had anything, like I've never had this kind of opportunity. So I'm just thinking of places that, you know, I've, I'm so used to with my, my background and whatever. Great. You know, looking, so, looking at like only great. If, if we need to go going. to 50 places and, and see if they'll, if one of them will take you, then, then great. But here's the, the beautiful thing, man, is that there's somebody out there that wants to help mm -hmm. and support you. You just got to ask for it. And the, and I know it's, t it's been tough for you in your life to ask for support because it generally comes with like bad connotation or some shit that comes from it. But you have the opportunity now to ask for support here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I might not 99, I like all the time be able to answer really quickly or answer the phone. Or like yeah. I'm in a meeting, you I know, understand. You, you've I called or texted, understand that. but you know, my interests yeah. and you know, my intentions, my intentions for you is to get a job, mm -hmm. to be able to make that money, give back to people that have been in similar situations as you yep. to overcome all of the mental illnesses and what they say that you have and all this stuff. I'm, I believe in only so much. I believe that you have the, the capabilities to get through all of the trauma mm -hmm. and come out the other side, a winning man in every area of your life. And I want you to have, I want you to buy that house. So tonight, what you're going to do, you're going to come up with a big list mm -hmm. of all of these places that you want to work. And then what we're going to do, we're going to carve out one of these days and I'm going to go, we're going to go drive to each of these places. And I'm very good at talking with people. Very good talking with people. I don't even need to fucking document this shit. It doesn't matter to me. Like, this is enough. We're going to talk. We're going to be like, hey, is there a supervisor here? Or is there anybody like, are you guys hiring? Whatever it is. And we're going to try and get you in the door. Now, you don't want to be around alcohol, right? I don't. I would prefer not to be around any alcohol or any drug paraphernalia because of the fact that I am a former addict and you alcoholic. Know, alcoholic. So... For Spring. me to maintain my sobriety and keep myself on track and know myself well enough, if I'm around that, I know it would put myself at risk. Do you and have a laptop? Let me ask you. Do you have a laptop? No, I do not. You don't have a laptop? No, okay. I, I do everything on my phone. If you were offered a job, would you hustle your ass off? Yeah, I would. If, if it actually meant something to you. Yes. Yeah. Let's do let, let's let's make something happen for you, man. And mm -hmm. I and I'm going to in my as much as I can, as much as I can I will carve out time. I will you you can count on me for that one hundred percent to help you get to that next step because once you have some money flowing in, mm -hmm. 
and yes. the social security, like everything is, is, is situated. You can get yourself a nicer place mm-hmm. or you can stay where you are, save up money because you're safe there. Everything's yeah, good. I'm safe. I'm, I mean, you enjoy it. It's, it's finally a place at, you know, at one time, you know, first time in my life, I can actually say it's a little piece of heaven <laughs> right now. You know, hold on. It's not much. Let, let, let's not go further than that, man. It's a little piece of heaven. A little piece of heaven because you have a place to put your head, bro. And a place that's quiet, a place that I can feel I can get serenity. How often do you hear people complaining about the loud noise outside a little bit? Or like, oh, I live in the city or, oh, I live in this state or, oh, my mom is always telling me to wake up at a certain time to get ready for the day or, oh, my dad expects so much from me or this. And you're like, me putting my fucking head down is a little piece of heaven. When you, when you lose everything, and I mean everything, and you live like that for years, and you try to rebuild from that, you literally have a whole new perspective. I wake up sometimes at night because it's so quiet. <laughs> Bro, you got me ch- with chills, man. And it hasn't always ever been wow. like that. I'm used to waking up you know, brawls. people s- brawls, people screaming from, you know, I've lived on the streets where people were getting shot. I've watched people get killed. I've watched people get stabbed. I mean, that's just, have you ever been shot life. at or stabbed? I've come very damn close. I've been in a nearby drive by shooting. Um, I was lucky enough to hit the ground before anything happened. Gosh, damn, dude. Uh, I've come close while I was in prison where, you know, of course, they do check paperwork everywhere you go. It doesn't happen, but just saying. Yeah. And if your paperwork doesn't check out, you do. What? You get killed. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, in prison. In prison, if you don't, if you usually, okay, if you get caught with any specific charge involving kids, anything with kids, you will get killed. Or you'll get put through the most painful life you've ever lived. You will get killed. One way or another, you will get a green light on your head. You will get killed. That's no ands, ups, or buts. That's how it is in there. That's how bad it is in there. So your dad, is he still alive? He's in what you call protective custody. But he won't be for the rest of his, all his life, will he? I hope not. Jeez. Jeez, man. I mean, I don't pass, you know, bad fortune on to anybody. You know, I really don't. But when somebody doesn't want to answer for their own, or yet alone even admit to their own doings, their their own doings, doings, their wrong doings, what's what's wrong with that? This is what I'm going to say, man. Pass good vibes to him. Pass for good vibes to everybody. Because although he did horrific things, there is still... You gotta remember, he was born just like you. Yeah, you were born a baby, laughing and stuff. You know, like crying and with emotion. Like we were born one way. When when everybody comes out of the womb, how is it? Innocent, <clears throat> innocent. You know, innocent. So look, this is what I'm gonna say, man. Because I want to go fucking. I want to go get you some po- a poke bowl, a massive poke bowl. Some some uh, some sushi, some rice, some everything. Sushi. Does that sound good? I haven't had sushi Fuck in over 10 years. You haven't had sushi in over 10 years? 
Yeah, it's, it's expensive stuff, man. All right, we're going to go get sushi right after this. <laughs> we're going to go get sushi after this, okay? You cool with that? Are you serious? 100%. And you get to order anything from the menu. You cool with that? I'm totally down. That's cool as hell. Sweet. Hell so, yeah. We're, yeah, so we're going to go get sushi, and we'll, and you'll get as and, as much as you want. I don't care. Whatever you want. I'll get you some of the, the best rice cake. Like, oh, yeah, it's going to be fucking dope. So right, I'm cool with that. Man, this is what I'm going to tell you. Thank you. Pass good vibes even to people that do bad things. To everyone and anyone. I'm serious, man. Because they are human beings. They're all them. human beings in the end. Like, pass on good vibes. They need it more than anything. They could be in pain more than you could ever imagine in their minds. You know, you have a mental illness. Other people have my, uh, mental illnesses. I Shit, man. I have anxiety. I have depression that I go through. Whatever. There's more pain than, than anybody could ever imagine in different minds. It's all how we, we're reacting to it. It's how we're shifting. If we were never taught, if we never knew what was right from wrong, if we never understood those type of things, man, this pain is just going to keep on rolling. So I, I do want to close now, man. I, I do, I do want to close. And I want to go get fucking sushi with you, bro. All right, let's do it. Ready to fucking eat some good ass sushi? Hell yeah. Man, you are a blessing, bro. Right. You Thank are you. you are a blessing to the world. And, and I so want you to you. remember that. Thank you. I know. <laughs> and that's the most important thing, man, is acknowledging your fucking self. Tell me I'm a handsome dude. You're a sexy dude. I fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yep. Like, hey, you're a hard ass worker and you're so passionate. I know. Thank you. Exactly. That's the way we get to live our lives from now on. It's not, uh, like give someone else a compliment so it can like deflect. It's no, man. Yeah. You said that about me. Fuck. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. For the longest time, I didn't even know if I was good looking or not. Soon enough, I found out I was fucking good looking. You know why? Because everybody was telling me, Brennan, you're good looking. Brennan, you're good looking. Brennan, you're good looking. Oh, okay. I must be good looking. No, listen, it's all up here. Every, yeah. Literally everything, man. Mind. The mind and the knowledge is all power. Yeah. You know, we don't, it's amazing, even on neurological levels, even in, in statistically, you know, scientists have proven we only use so much percentage of our brain. Yep. I imagine if we could only use so much more of that, I much know. of what we're capable of. Dude, you're an amazing human being. You are. So, so let's Thank go get you. fucking sushi. All right. Mm -hmm. Where can they find you? At Drew or, or what is it? At what? Uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, or, Do you know it? Uh, Pull out your phone right now. It's a Gerhold. Uh, <laughs> spell this. Spell this. G e r h o l d b i l l y. Can we Instagram. please give him some follows, guys, ladies and gentlemen? And if you have a job for him online, I'll, I'll, like if someone offers you a job online and it's a salary position, anybody that's on on camera, I'll buy you a laptop. How about that? If anybody offers him a job online, you hear his Instagram, I will buy you a laptop. And now you have a laptop to work from. And now you can go to coffee shops and you can focus on that craft. I would, I would love that. So whether it's assistant, whether it's support, whether it's X, Y, and Z. I'd be blessed if I got something like that. I would cool. be very, very blessed cool. and happy. How about let's skip the regular workforce and let's let's take you online, man. Let's let's get you a, a job online. So we're gonna go get sushi. Mm -hmm. We're gonna get you that laptop if someone offers you something. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent, I got you. I got you. There's there's good people in this world, man. There's a there lot are. of good people. There, a lot of good people. I just happen to be one of them sitting right in front of you. But it's also hard to find out who those people are too. Uh, all it comes down to is trusting yourself and building that relationship with them. Exactly. Man. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself that you're a good person. Mm -hmm. and then find it in the other person by just trusting that exactly and, and speaking to the, their same language it's mm -hmm. just acknowledgement it's hey man i intentions sometimes it's just show take, up taking a risk right and how did you survive prison definitely put myself out there and taking a risk you know and relationships yep if you didn't have relationships you might have not have survived prison absolutely you're not. a skinny white guy like if you like like, let's let's be real. Like if I was in prison and I was a, and and like, you know, you're. It's not that easy. No, it isn't. Definitely, isn't. it's not that fucking easy. Like, like imagine if like like a and anybody that's skinny, you walk in the you you walk in there, guys are freaking 
roided out, I'm sure, too. And there's a lot no, of bad... Most, there's, there's dudes in there that are 6'5", <laughs> that are close to 400 pounds. I mean, you can't even see their neck. It's just nothing but solid. Yeah, so, so yeah, we're skinny dudes walking in there, man. I don't know how... <laughs> you know what I mean? Relationships. That's my point, yeah. is relationships. So, bro, thank you so much for coming on, bro. No, thank you for allowing me to be here. And do the show with you. So anybody, right. look, 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 send me a message on Instagram if you offer him a job, okay? Send him a message and send me a message on Instagram. I'll see it pretty quickly. And if I don't see it the first time, please send me another message. And if you can, just email me, Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N, at createyouagency.com. I'll fix you up with a laptop if you get this job opportunity, cool? And cool. yeah, you're also going to give me a full list tonight. Yes, and we're going to go absolutely. fucking eat sushi. For the that first time in like 10 years, all right? So, bro, thank you so much for, for coming on here. Uh, it's a blessing to me, and you're an inspiration to me, bro. Well, thank you. Thank you, for bro. For having me. Thank you. And anyone listening or watching right now, if you want to take the next step in your life, you hear it. You're, you're seeing it. You're listening. Look, my man, you call yourself Billy on fucking Instagram. He's had <laughs> his identity stolen many times. He's been in and out of foster care. He's been in and out of prison. He's seen, the, seen people die. He's seen murders. He's... He's seen everything you could imagine plus more. He's been diagnosed with mental illnesses. He's, he's been a drug addict. He's been through AA. Like, he's been through it all. And today he sits here smiling and saying, you got this. Yep. Saying, it is what it is. Let's keep on pounding. And if for one second you or you feel like you can't accomplish something, Remember this story and remember this man and all that he's been through and what he's accomplishing and make it fucking happen. So thank you again for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience. Remember when you review the podcast in the show notes or in the description, you click that link. There's a specific link right there. I give you seven free gifts, absolutely free. I don't need anything from you except for that beautiful five-star, five-star juicy review. Five-star. Yeah, fuck yeah. Five-star, juicy as hell. Talk about how you enjoyed this podcast and we will dive in even more and more into new topics. Remember, every Friday, we have Quick Time Friday. One of my most exciting days is we just tap into the mind and answer some questions and really uncover some, some really cool stuff. And I give you a lot of strategies and techniques and structures to level up your life and your businesses. So uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience. I'm Brennan. This is my man, Billy, on Instagram. <laughs> nah, man. This is, my, this is my man, Drew. And thanks for tuning in. Peace. My right, I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable. Anything in my way, I'ma break through. Lights, camera, action, take two. Can't worry about what they do. You gotta create you.